houses are spaces that we can all relate to. They're sacred places, no matter what your home is. Whatever home is to you, it's a place where you find comfort and strength and hopefully you feel safe. We can all relate to that and so that's why I think these buildings are kind of perfect for being able to help us connect and empathize with enslaved people. Right now, in our official state record, only 1% of documented historic sites are categorized as having any African-American historical significance. And we know that's a gross underrepresentation. Virginia Humanities is one of 56 federally legislated state humanities councils. We're responsible for um, helping to preserve and, and teach Virginia's history and culture. Our mission is to provide interesting, engaging content telling the story of Virginia. More recently, we've been documenting slave dwellings across Virginia. When you understand what those spaces are, I think it's much more meaningful. I think it provides a better context for what the totality of Virginia history really includes. We are at Ant Hill Plantation. It's a, a late 18th century an early 19th century plantation site. Today we are documenting Ant Hill. We're capturing some 360 imaging. We're doing um, some photography. Ant Hill is, is actually where my family was enslaved. Um, my grandmother's side of the family on, on my dad's side. Um, my great-great-grandfather, Reverend Jacob Randolph Sr., would have been born here at Ant Hill. His mother died when he was fairly young, around three or four years old. And it does make me sad to think of, of him being here as a four-year-old, as a five-year-old, and, and not having um, his, his mother here with him. I think about how much strength that, that took for him. And I'm grateful that in that moment where he could have been, been completely hopeless, that he was able to, to hold on. I guess the previous owner mm -hmm. thought that this was a like a post Civil War yeah. like Weaver's cottage. When we brought Joby out here, she was able to quickly date it, okay. and it's obviously, obviously pre Civil War, okay. and it was a slave quarter, not a Weaver's, a Weaver's cottage. cottage. Yeah. Too often we talk about history as something that happened in the past as a series of events that aren't at all connected to who we are now, or if they are connected, only in a victorious way, that make us feel good, that tell a story that we can be proud of. The painful parts of history are still festering. We see the results of them, we see the effects of them every day. I feel like when we capture these images, we're really trying to like, reinsert the enslaved community into these histories. Yeah. I mean, it's so easy to visit plantation sites today and forget the women and the children, mm -hmm. um, the men who, who built these sites, who, who kept these sites afloat, who generated the wealth um, that, that made these sites possible. Essentially what was occurring was this, this, this myth-making. Um, when, it, when it came to American history, you know, we were taught that slavery wasn't that bad, that the majority of enslavers were benevolent, that enslaved African Americans lived lives that were, were better under slavery and, and faced these insurmountable odds post-slavery. And so I think that was the, the dominant narrative that black and white children were receiving. These myths continued on after emancipation. This was published in 1964. You would see a lot of textbooks that talked about enslaved African Americans feeling a sense of loyalty to their owners. You would see textbooks describe slavery as being beneficial for African Americans. You see textbooks that attribute the Civil War to Northern industrialization and aggression and not the issue of slavery. It's horrifying that like, people still really, really believe that. Someone who was raised on this textbook is how old now? Probably in their 70s. So the people making making the laws in Virginia grew yeah. up with this. These are things that were being taught almost as soon as the Civil War ended through, in some cases, the 1980s. We can't let it continue to be unspoken. It also erases history. Like, right, you're not getting the full story, so you actually don't understand where the country is coming from. If you don't understand where the country is coming from, how can you have any sense of where we're going? 
having these buildings still be present reminds people that enslaved people were, were integral to the founding of this country. They were the reasons why places like this could even exist, and they were the reason why this country could even be founded. And so I hope when people are able to see these physical reminders, it, it, it helps them remember all the people we typically leave out of these, these historical narratives. And, and I hope that it, it will ensure that um, enslaved people are central parts of this history. I think you know, being a, a, a post-civil rights post-segregation generation is definitely influencing the work, and so we're more mindful of, of diverse audiences and how this can reach people from all backgrounds and, and what they can gain from this history. So we aren't just speaking to black audiences, but we want you know, people of, of all races and ethnicities and nationalities to see and understand the significance of this work.